Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Lionel. Hi guys, to win, and it is time for yet another Total War Pharaoh release trailer gameplay showcase thingy, majiggers. So let's get into it. So today we are reacting to the Tusret gameplay showcase. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Probably not, but let's get into it. And let's see who is our narrator this time. Egypt has many sacred lands. And it's probably her herself, right? Most men are not conditioned siege. to conquer them. Nice siege equipment. They I may guess. believe they are. But they lack the skill. It's time to die, okay? Okay. I already see one thing wrong here. Nobody is holding a fucking battering ram. That is an issue. The foresight. Oh, chariots. The okay. respect. Oh, okay. Interested to see how that siege is working out. Uh oh. He did. Pharaoh is dead. Only those that understand our lands. That's probably a threat. Let's see where she's from. Rapa Bam, that looks cool. She looks like a very nice good person. Good morning, everyone. Ah, the sun is shining, the pharaoh's dead, and we are getting <laughs> out of the pharaoh. <laughs> That's like really fucking casual. Good morning, sun is shining, the pharaoh's dead. Teletubbies, come out now. Pharaoh's <laughs> dead. How dramatic. <gasps> well, we all know what happens when you have an empty throne. Civil war. Yay, civil war. And the question on everyone's lips is who will be pharaoh next? No checking the history books. We're in control of history now. We're showing you an early alpha build of the game, so please forgive any upside down pyramids or other visual entities. <laughs> Our journey started Ooh. in Upper Egypt, which is actually. That was a very nice pan. We're in control of history now. We're showing you an early alpha build of the game, so please. Can we also spot the upside down pyramid? Because, like, I feel like he put this in for, like, just a, a teaser or, like, a uh, Easter egg. Forgive any upside down. But like look at the pyramids or other like, visual oddities. Wow, really cool. Our journey started in Upper Egypt, which is actually mm -hmm. south of Lower Egypt. Figure that one out. <laughs> uh, we took advantage of our close relationship with Seti and set up some early barter agreements. 500 food for 110 wood put us in a healthy position to grow our army, and grow we did, taking out and settling the provinces of Yebu through Hetem and Mez, and Kirkur Oasis. Damn, we didn't just take armies. these lands on a random whim, though. Oh no. Their production of food and stone, respectively, was important for us to secure our large armies. But now that the pharaoh is out of the picture, they benefit us in more ways than one. Okay. Let's head into the pharaoh's crown window to get a rundown of the situation Ooh, okay, this and officially is join the war. We choose the path, join the civil war. We have 15 turns until the next pharaoh is decided, which will increase, increase. as new factions join the war. The basis of that decision lies in how much legitimacy the contender has. As you can see, okay. we currently have 43 legitimacy. Uh, Toshret 43, yeah. And so this one is the next pharaoh right now, as it seems. Uh, yeah, okay. Seems one fair. of our largest sources of that comes from how much sacred Egyptian land we own. When I said we didn't take this land on a random whim, here's the main reason we took it. Ah, Expanding okay. out into the desert has gained us enough legitimacy to land us in third place for the crown. Our closest rivals include Amon Mez and Menepta's remaining faction. I'm not above spoiling the I'm so definitely gonna butcher all these names once the game gets out. That is like pfft. race with a little blade to the ankle, if you know what I mean. I'm gonna kill off my competitors if that wasn't clear. <laughs> once we take the lead for legitimacy, we'll claim our place as pharaoh, and using that power, take Menefer, our rightful land to rule from, also known as Memphis. So, on turn 22, we were just attacked by one of the last remaining armies of Kirka. They thought they could take back Kirka Oasis, but House Wright was close enough by to interrupt their okay. siege. Ah, so this is... Now, I love Kirkur Oasis. It's okay. my favorite oasis. But I'd rather not have to keep bringing Talsret back over to defend it. So before we leave, I'm going to stop by the settlement's garrison camp. 
By swapping in some of our units, we can have a backup army with reduced upkeep lying in wait nearby, just in case the settlement needs it. Oh, that is interesting. So now once the Oasis gets attacked, you have an additional five units extra in your defending army as reinforcements. We have a couple of these camps dotted around our most vulnerable settlements, with or units positioned upkeep. to lend a helping hand if needed. Interesting. We'll then recruit some more units to keep Talswit's army strong. We've got a nice balance going of ranged and melee to back up our chariots. Try to the slingers. Probably best to upgrade some of our food producing buildings as well to feed the new men. As a leader who's declared themselves a pretender for the throne, we have access to a selection of crowns, each with bonuses to our Ooh. faction. The Nemez crown offers us minus 10% replenishment, but plus 10 production of all resources, which we are in need of at the moment. Among Talsarit's ancillaries, we can equip our new crown. Oh, okay, that's snazzy, cool. Talsarit. Ugh. No matter how fun <laughs> sliding down sand is, well, transversing directly across the desert plains is never an easy feat. So for now, we'll stick to the roads. This road leads directly oh, to our next target. Roads. Okay, okay. Just Let's take the army out they've garrisoned at their outpost to make sieging the main settlement an easier task. Dungal Oasis does not lie on sacred Egyptian lands. So, you would be... Hmm. Because, like, this is interesting, because, like, you could just go for here first, uh, capture this one, and then go over here. So what would it mean that the enemy can do that with you? So the four or five units you have stacked in here doesn't actually mean that much if there's a 20 stack coming over here and then over here. So it's like a really probably difficult decision on how much troops you put in there. I think that's something you actually have to kind of learn. And Dungal see Oasis how the AI does not works. lie on sacred Egyptian lands. However, it's a settlement that specializes in food resources, something we're fighting to keep in supply. Literally fighting. Our soldiers will need to construct siege ladders before the attack, as well as a ram to get through the gate. While preparation is made, we'll take our second army garrisoned over in Netkem and begin work raiding the lands of Abdu. Abdu are another competitor for the crown, so naturally we're at war. Not only that, but they stand between us and Menifer. Okay, interesting. So we take the city. Oh, and if you've noticed the world oh. has turned a little gloomy, it's because we've entered into a state of crisis. Don't look at me, <laughs> I've been looking after our lands. Very I don't know what's going on over in crisis. Well, let's hope that the gods are with us like, today. Okay, that is something that is going to be difficult. Like, if you're all the way in southern Egypt, and the pillars of creation getting destroyed in Canaan and upper Egypt, you're getting into a state of crisis as well, without you actually being able to do something about it. That seems a little bit And if we head into the local deity maybe? panel, well, we can see their friendly faces. Before we continue in our campaign, we really should show them a little bit of attention, in the hopes that they'll bless us with some of their good fortune. Don't just pick your god and who looks the coolest, tough. though. We all know we'd pick Anubis. Yeah. Instead, take a look at what bonuses they can offer you. Each Happen god offers three rain. tiers of worship, which we can build up through building shrines, praying to them, and devoting generals to their name. We're currently watching Isis, but as Cyrus offers 10% replenishment from prayer, a useful bonus post-battle. Plus, if we take Abdu's capital, we'll have the cult center for Osiris. Taking that would seriously increase our favor. Whether oh, it's divine so intervention or bliss. Cities have their capital, like deities have their own capitals, which improves relations with deities. Interesting. Okay, fair point. Like, they did have a lot of gods and religious stuff back in Tabor those days. Doesn't matter. Works for me. Our siege equipment is ready, so let's head into battle. There's your next option Engage turn. The enemy. At ah, the beginning siege of battle. battle, we're shown the current and predicted weather conditions. Uh, Talzaret is not one to fly into battle without a bit of thought and consideration. Sweltering heat will just tire our men out before they can even reach the walls. We'll wait out this weather for something a little more tactical to us. The sandstorm will once again help us here as we approach oh. the walls, by like... reducing the enemy archers and towers accuracy. Ah, okay, yeah, I was like, sandstorm, that's was... probably shit for a fight in, but in a siege, it's actually, like, archers minus archer range and ac accuracy could actually Positioned our help. siege ladders to the south, and our ram is on its own in the west, convincing our enemy to only hold a small defense at the gate. However, our chariots, with their speed, will head around, taking them off guard, and following through the gate as soon as it's broken down capturing the vital points of the city, while the rest of our army fights at the walls. Good idea. Jared's chasing it. So 
they're basically sacrificing everything. Everyone else. Hopefully the AI is a little bit better at defending its city and its tactical points than it was in Warhammer 3. Like, that would be nice. Hopefully they paid attention to Back that. Back in the campaign, we've specced into decrees focusing on resources so far. However, I plan on recruiting some more chariot units, so let's steer our research in that direction. Kalsar has some unique chariots to aid her in battle, and I want to utilize them, especially the Elite Javelin Chariots, Medium Chariots, Skirmish, or Defense. Got some decent stats. These metal attacks are very quick. Um, range, Missile Damage. 27 Ammunition. God damn. For 21 Chariots. The Elite Javelin Chariots with their higher armor. We've begun the building chain Ooh. for the units we want, so we'll continue to focus our resources on upgrading that. In Talsra's skill tree, we can see that six of each competencies will grant us lavish in parades, a useful title for a chariot heavy army. For now, we've picked Overseer of Militia, and next we'll get Master Charioteer. And we can perhaps utilize Gaze of Neef along the way. That's rapid fire. We'll send Talsra down to the Buhen province, another source of both sacred Egyptian land and precious food production, plus our closest crown rival, Amen Mez. However, her absence in the homelands is felt, and while she's away building on her legitimacy for the crown, Apt you decide now is a good time for an offensive. Seems they weren't too happy with our attacks on their outposts. <laughs> There's a chance our second army can make their way back, and if they arrive in time, we'll have good backup. If not, we'll have to rely on the garrison force at our nearby outpost. Let's see what hmm. that does. Our second army were not able to reach Nekin in time, so our garrison must prove themselves. Our reinforcing outpost will arrive straight away from the southeast. Ah, it should give us a nice rear attack outpost. if we can hold the outer areas. So that is interesting. Oh, you see this? The very. It uh, should give us a nice rear attack if we can hold the outer areas. Like, where is this? After the support. Like, what is this movement line? Is that. Would that be a manual made movement line? Or is that like a mode you can put them in? It's like this isn't the circle one like you had with the, the, the Jaff Cav in Rome 1 and 2. Um, looks interesting. Stance hold. Okay, so we get to see some more stances. Talsret's army settles the raids here at him. It'll be the first of four settlements we plan to take in Buhen. As she heads down to face Amon Mez, we've sent our second army back up north to finally take care of Abju. Then we'll take him across the river to take out our crown competitor, Wasit. It'll be an aggressive few turns to the end of the Civil War. Ooh, that's a hard fight. It's gonna be a tough fight, this one. Chariots. I feel like the chariots are going to be really good in this game. Like, you don't really have other horsemen than chariots, I think. At least that we have seen. I definitely like the cinematics that they pulled with this one. I don't get why you would raise territory, to be honest. I always try to occupy everything. Fun fact, Wasset has a more commonly known name. Thebes. Thebes. Okay, I... Thebes. I gotta, I'm gonna be honest, this... I know it's an alpha build, but this still needs to change. Okay, alpha build is probably that the arrows are stuck in fucking mid-air. But I still think it's bullshit that you have a fucking battering ram on wheels that is still moving by on its own. Like, we got rid of the pocket ladders, that we that were very happy about this, but the magic battering ramps are still here. Like, that is still an issue that I honestly... It's, it's an easy fix. Rome 1 had it. Like, literally, Rome 1. Rome Total War had it in, like, 2003. So why is it so difficult to get this in like 2023? Like, that should be easy, right? I don't know, start a petition for that. 
Otherwise, I'm impressed. But that was a nice, nice cinematic shot. At long last, we have proven our worth to sit as Pharaoh over Egypt. But a crown is not enough for Tazra. She wants the throne. Menefer sits in the north, just beyond our husband Seti, who we've built good relations with. To get there, we need to take out Menepta's remaining faction. Abju and Amon Mez were taken care of, but while Menepta's remaining faction is dwarfed by our power, they still pose a threat, and a second civil war could be just around the corner. Let's move my pieces around a bit. He has a very Big Utilizing thing. our biggest natural asset, the River Nile, Big we thing. can transverse across Egypt in a much more efficient manner. Big territory. Talzra can head up north to connect with our second general in our approach on Menefer. I like the idea that you can use the river for a very quick, quick transport as well. We should also set up some new trade deals to keep our resources flowing. We can find out what resources are in more demand and set up our barter agreements accordingly. And finally this turn, we'll want to revisit the gods. We've been doing an awful lot of praying, as well as constructing shrines at our outposts. Opening the local deities panel, we can see we've reached tier 2, which enables us to devote our general to Osiris. Looking at Ra's bonuses, it would have been nice to get a charge bonus for our chariots. No, I can't be tempted. I'll stick to Osiris. Besides, that. through that. the preparation against reprisal decree, we can unlock another slot for worship. I'll get two gods on the go. Perhaps for now nice. we'll devote our second general and save Talzret for Ra Benny. a little later down the line. En route, we'll stop by our chariot workshops to pick up some new wheels. The elite javelin chariots are ours to recruit. Their higher charge bonus will be very useful for flanking. We've also unlocked the upper Egyptian Kapesh warriors, who are immune to flanking. Immune to flanking? There's one remaining oh. army of Wasat, and as we move up the river, Talzra can thank our second general for his hard work by helping to take them out, ending their story oh, once and for all. Very easy this gives us fight. a good chance to try our elite javelin chariots. We'll take our other chariots around to distract the enemy ranged units, while our elites tease the infantry units. I might hold the rest of my army back a little bit to play with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they ain't reaching me. Nice. Chariots are just perfect for skirmish mode. Oh yeah, he's actually drawing them around. Oh, that is... That's a very interesting tactic too. If you can do it like that the sun smoothly... sets over Egypt. And I've noticed that Seti is edging closer and closer to the idea of confederation. As my husband, I thought he would have suggested that a little bit sooner, but I guess he was busy. <laughs> Let's give him a little ultimatum and see where his loyalties lie. Yeah, I thought as much. Nice. Before taking Menefer, we need to deal with Pepta and Anubu Hegei. We'll send our warlord Seti out first to encircle Still? the garrison outposts, it's only turned cutting them 50. off from the main settlements. While the brain of the operation, Tal's rest, so swoops in. He's turn 42. He's already Pharaoh. He has half Egypt in his pocket. Either he's a god, kind of is because he's a pharaoh, um, but or does this feel like it's going by, by really, really quick, like turn-wise? And to take control. Our second general will continue to defend our homelands. Okay, I feel like turn 43 and he's pushing up towards half of Egypt. I feel like he's already conquered half of Egypt by now. It seems weird. Menepta's remaining faction stands defiant in the capital, our last threat to the claim of the crown. Tausra has begun the Ooh. attack with two siege towers and wall sapping. We've got another few turns to wait for that to complete. Once it has, our forces will have knocked a hole through their defenses. I plan to utilize it for my chariots to get in faster. Let us prove our legitimacy. Good wall sapping does sound We've set our siege towers to arrive at two different areas of the western wall to spread out the enemy forces. In front of them will be our spearmen in a spear wall formation, protecting themselves and the ladder units from arrows. Our wall sapping has created a gap on the southwest corner, which will send our elite chariots. To be honest. I want some infantry to head in first, though, to defend them from any surprises, as a chariot backed into a corner is useless. We'll utilize our Kapesh warriors as they are immune to flanking. The rest of our chariots will fly around the field to draw attention away from the ladders, and finally, our ranged units will fire upon the wall to cause some early damage. I'm going to hold Talzrat back for a little bit until Seti has arrived. By then, I hope to have captured the main gate, and we can send the rest of our armies through there. Solid tactic. Okay, so we actually just putting it in there. 
the points are empty again. So the points look pretty empty. Yuri? And everybody is just storming in. There are a few chariots. Probably gonna be annoying to deal with chariots. Oh. That is a solid cinematic. Although this city burns, it will rise again under the eye of a new pharaoh. A rightful pharaoh. Egypt will no longer be led by short-sighted locusts, determined only to chase satiation. But instead, with the patience of the deserts, shaping Egypt with purpose, wisdom, and conviction. I was like, now she pulls the door open, there's just one guy with a spear like... <laughs> All hail the new pharaoh! All hail the pharaoh! I am pretty impressed, actually. I am pretty excited as well. Um, only, only criticism that I have, basically, is still the magic battering rams. <laughs> I'm probably gonna keep shitting about that until either they fix it or the game comes out. So other than that, I am really excited to see this coming to life. Like, I feel like they're doing, trying to do more and more based on the feedback that they're getting as well. So yeah, I am, I'm pretty interested. I'm pretty excited. And I'm getting more and more excited with it. Like, like in the last two videos, I said like I was a little bit hesitant still. Uh, but slowly that hesitation is turning into um, anticipation, like positive anticipation on this game. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I am very interested in what your opinions are about this video. So be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a like on the video and by all means subscribe to the channel for more decent content. Thanks again and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.